Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So let's say I sell the uh, 2021 call spread at 35 cents. So the 20 calls by the 21 calls. I take in a credit of 35 cents, so that's more than the 25 that I require myself to take. And let's see. The most I can make is 35. The most I can lose is 65. So that's way better than my 1 to 5 ratio. <clears throat> this is like a, about a 2 to 1 ratio. I can make 1 and lose 2, basically. right? I can make 35 and lose 65. So it's like 1 to 2. <clears throat> you know, maybe the stock is at 19 bucks when I make this trade. If the stock's at 19 bucks, well, it's easier if I show you on the P&L diagram. If the stock's at 19 bucks when I make this trade, you know, if, if we talk to a professor or some sort of statistician, he'll say, well, it's got a 50-50 shot of going up, 50-50 shot of going down. Now, if we're good at reading volatility charts, or excuse me, price charts, we could probably do better than 50-50, I think. You know, not 100% or 90% winners, better than 50-50. But let's just say that, you know, we're, we're, we're terrible at reading volatility charts, and it, and it is pretty random. Like, all our picks have a 50-50 shot at winning and losing. Well, if that's the case, if the stock's at 19, there's a 50% chance of it falling below 19, and a 50% chance of falling above 19. Now, if it goes a little bit above 19 or stays at 19, I'm a winner. So 50% chance of it being a loser if it goes down. And if it stays where it is, I'm a winner. And if it goes up just a little bit, I'm a winner. Just if it goes up too much, there's too much volatility to the upside, then I lose. So the odds are better, maybe significantly better, than 50% chance that I have a winner here. It's a high probability trade. And in fact, as long as the stock stays below 2035, I'm a winner. Now Lawrence asks, Dan, what is a realistic, consistent return that one can reasonably achieve monthly by selling those credit spreads. <clears throat> and he adds that he's a newbie. Lawrence, that's a great question. <clears throat> I see sometimes online people say, oh, you know, you make 15% your first month with me when I teach you, you know, and is it possible to make 15% a month? Sure. You know, is that something you, anyone could possibly guarantee you? Surely not. <clears throat> you should make money just about every month when you're trading with edge on high probability income trade. But you're going to have some months when you lose. Should I mean, I don't, if you're if you have a knack for it and you're trading for edge, probably you probably shouldn't lose more than one month a year. And when you do lose, it shouldn't be a lot. You've got to protect yourself from these big losses. So, you know, I kind of like to stay general because I don't like to imply that, you know, hey, if you just follow what I'm saying, you're going to make, you know, hundreds of percents, you know, a year or something like that. But I, I will tell you, that anecdotally, from students getting back to me, they, they say that they're making reasonably good returns. Now, Jeff says, if you place the trade and it starts to go against you, is there a way to adjust it? Yes, Jeff, there is. It's a little out of the scope of what we're talking about here, but I will show you how to access some of that material on my website when we get done here. And John asks, how is there a 65% loss potential? 
Here's how. With the stock at 19, we sell this 2021 spread for 35 cents. If the stock remains below 20 by expiration, both of the options expire and we keep the 35 cents as a profit. Let's say the stock goes up. It goes really high up. It goes up above 21. Well, that 35 cents is still ours. But we get a sign on our 20 calls and we get short stock at 20. And we can exercise our 21 calls and buy the stock back at 21. So we negative scalp a dollar. So we lose a dollar if the stock's above 21 at expiration, but we still have the 35 cents. So our net loss is really only 65, John. Now I don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is this is kind of the what ultimately becomes the important stuff that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls with credit spreads and iron condors is using the Greeks, delta, theta, and also vega. This has the directional sensitivity, sensitivity of being short 11 shares. That's what this negative almost 11 delta means. I make a half a cent a day because I collected 35 cents and it gets worth about a half cent less every day. Tomorrow it's worth 34 and a half. The next day it's worth 34. That assumes, of course, we're not making or losing on Delta or Vega. All is held constant. And if we sold volatility that was overpriced, and maybe volatility falls, say, five points, we're going to eke out an extra three cents, which in this case is almost 10%. Because when implied volatility falls, the option strategy, the option price changes by the amount of the vega. If implied volatility falls six cents, or excuse me, if implied volatility falls, say, five points, and our vega is short six cents, it's five times six, that's, you know, 5.006, that's three cents extra that I would make on the trade given just that slight five-point drop in implied volatility. <clears throat> now, this is three cents on a 35-cent trade, but if the net credit was bigger, the vega would be bigger, and a difference of 10% on each trade is not outside of the realm of possibility. That's why doing a volatility analysis is so important. You can make more on every trade on your winners, you can lose less on every trade on your losers. Now let's zip through a put credit spread. That's when I sell one put and buy another on the same underlying in the same expiration month, but, with, but the put I'm buying is a lower strike price. And the goals are the same, profit from theta without having the underlying stock move too much lower. And hopefully we stay above the break-even price by the time expiration rolls around. The Put credit spread PL diagram looks like this, just the opposite. Ideally, I want to stay above the short strike price by the time expiration rolls around. That's where I reach my maximum profit potential. If the stock falls all the way down below the long strike, that's where I reach my maximum loss. It's kind of the same thing as a call credit spread, but just upside down. <coughs> Here I want maybe a slow, steady bull trend or a stock that's in a channel that's bouncing off support. No news in the pipeline. Implied volatility is moderately expensive. And I'm getting a payout of at least one to five, where I risk five to make one. Again, high probability trade. And I need to get at least a 25 cent nominal credit on every trade. So let's say here I sell the 67 and a half, 72 and a half put spread at 90 cents. Here my max gain is 90. My max loss is 410. My break even, which I'll show you, is 7160. So the goal is 
as long as the stock, you know, the stock is probably at like 71, say, when, when we make this trade. Not necessarily a bullish trade, it's just like a not bearish trade. As long as we stay above that 72 and a half strike, when expiration comes around, the options expire and we keep that premium. If the stock falls all the way down to 67 and a half or lower, <coughs> we'd have our maximum loss. Why? Because we'd get assigned on our 60 or on our 72 and a half puts, and therefore get long stock. And if the stock falls all the way down to 67 and a half, we can exercise our long 67 and a half strike puts and sell out that long stock and truncate our losses. Or de see, this is kind of the same concept. It's, the only thing that's different is the sign of the delta, really. We have a positive delta. We have a slight bullish bias to put credit spreads. We have a slight bearish bias to call credit spreads. Here our theta is, you know, 2.68 cents a day, and our vega is almost 3 cents a day. Here if implied volatility falls, say, 5 points, we make an actual 6 cents. It's on a 90 cent trade that's, <coughs> what is that, about 7%. And, you know, I'm saying if implied volatility falls 5 points, that's a little bit of an arbitrary figure. If we're selling moderately priced, you know, moderately higher priced implied volatility, you know, anywhere between 3 and 7 points is about right. So I'm just kind of using 5 as a benchmark. We're able to squeeze out maybe an extra 5 to 10% on this trade by Vega. Now Dan says, how does Vega relate to historical volatility? In a roundabout sort of way it does, it, it mostly relates to implied volatility though. <clears throat> it directly relates to implied volatility. When implied volatility changes, your option prices change by the amount of your Vega. Um, Sergey and uh, Caius, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, are both asking about delta. They're asking what delta are you choosing when you build the condor? Do you always sell the 15 to 25 delta? Uh, 15 to 25 is about right. You're, basically your delta helps you determine the probability of your trade guys and hold that question both of you guys until I explain what the iron condor is and, and then that'll be more relevant for everyone <clears throat> an iron condor like you know some of you might be thinking hey Passarelli I signed up for an iron condor presentation what's with the credit spreads Did you forget what presentation you're given no I basically already explained an iron condor you just didn't know it. An iron condor is two credit spreads, one put credit spread and one call credit spread on the same underlying at the same time. Both are typically out of the money. The goal is to profit from theta while losing little to statistical volatility on both credit spreads. And ideally, we want to see the stock close between both break-even points at expiration. So, <clears throat> you know, you can kind of picture the call credit spread on the right side and the put credit spread on the left side. With the call credit spread, we want the stock to be below, you know, the strike that we sold. With the put credit spread, we want the stock to be above the strike we sold. So, here, let me make this more clear for you here. Like... This right here, call credit spread, right? This right here, put credit spread. Combine them, 
and we've got an iron condor. With the call credit spread, we want to stay below our strike price. With the put credit spread, we want to stay above our strike price. So we kind of got to be in the middle. It's a direction neutral trade. You ever see a stock where you're looking at it and you're like, boy, this is a boring stock. This stock's been trading in a channel for three months. I don't think it's going to break out of that channel. And if you've never traded options before, you might think, well, geez, how am I supposed to make money with that stock? It doesn't really move. This is how you do it. You use an iron condor. <coughs> options are so versatile when you're creative enough to be able to use them. So just consider this as one big trade. Even though there's four options, consider it to be one trade. Long put, short put, and then the at the money somewhere in the middle. Short call and long call. So when we're putting on an iron condor, we need to do our technical analysis. We're looking for stocks in a channel. <coughs> bouncing off both support and resistance. And, okay, now is the time to talk about picking strikes. There are really <coughs> probably three main techniques for picking strikes for an iron condor. One technique is very, very complicated and convoluted. And sometimes people who want to seems smart, use this one, but I don't think it's the smartest way to do it, personally. You use volatility to find the standard deviation that is expected between now and expiration, and coincide your strikes as best as you can with that standard deviation. That's uh, probably a little too fancy. It's unnecessary. Some people like to use delta. The short put strike and the short call strike. They should be options that have a delta of, you know, whatever, 20 to 30 or so. That's an okay way to do it. Maybe 15 to 25, like somebody mentioned earlier. It's an okay way to do it. <clears throat> but you want to know the secret? I mean, as well as there can be a secret, it makes the most sense to set your short strikes with your support and your resistance line. Because if there's a stock that's in a channel and every time it gets to 80, it bounces, it goes lower, and then every time it goes to 70, it goes higher, and you're trying to say, huh, I gotta pick two strikes that I want, that I need, think the stock is gonna stay between. Hmm, which strike should I pick, huh? 70 and 80. I mean, the stock chart helps you with that. Use support and resistance to set your strike level. Makes so much more sense. No expected news coming out. <clears throat> and you, volatility needs to be moderately expensive. You need to get edge on this. Otherwise, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage unbeknownst to you. And you want to credit up at least 20%. No, excuse, yeah, wait, 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 back up. You want to pay out of at least one to three, risking three to make one or better. There's still high probability trades. You want at least a, 20 a credit that's 20% of the width of your wings. So if like one of your credit spreads is a 50-55, it's $5 wide, you need a credit of at least a dollar. Never, ever, ever less than 30 cents. Even if you're doing a really super low price stock like Ford or something, Ford Motor Company, don't sell an iron condor for less than 30 cents. Even if it is more than 20% or more than a 3 to 1 payout, it's just not worth it if you're selling for less than 30. So let's say we have a stock. Earnings are out soon before the market open. Not confirmed. Maybe it's confirmed, maybe it's not, it's not relevant. There's no dividends pending. Uh, 
It's not really a story stock. There's nothing really going on in the stock. Whoops. Getting ahead of myself. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.